feel like I'm crazy for doing this low key. A little harder than I thought. I'm working with natural lighting today, so I hope that you can see me. I am also filming on my phone because if I had to pick up my camera and set it up and stuff, I don't think I would have been able to make this video. So, hi everyone, and welcome back to another video. If you're new, welcome to my channel. Obviously, from the title, you can see um, I had a miscarriage at 21 weeks, five months pregnant. I believe the last video I have before this is me finding out that I was pregnant. And it was a pretty big deal because obviously you find out you're pregnant, your first child, right? But um, I was considered, well, considered clinically infertile. So <clears throat> it was a lot, it was a big deal. And it also took a lot for me to share it, but I knew that my testimony needed to be heard to give someone hope. And while I haven't been able to click on the video since this incident happened, I see the comments, I get the notifications, and I, I'm so happy that you guys are happy. Thank you for all the love. And I'm also happy at the hope it gave people, and I hope it doesn't go away with this video that I'm sharing right now. I may be confused. I may be a little angry, a little salty, but God is still faithful. He's still faithful. He don't tell us all his plans. We don't know how things are going to be, but he's still faithful. I'm super grateful for you guys um, and all the love and support and also the new subscribers that came to it. You guys got me over 700 subscribers and I am eternally grateful for that. And I hope that you continue to stay to watch the journey. So, yes. I had a miscarriage at 21 weeks. I just wanted to give some information. Hopefully it'll help someone else and also to share what happened because it was a pretty traumatic experience. Um, and then I'm also going to, as best as I can, I don't want to make this video long and as best as I can to make it through the video, share some of the steps that I'm, I'm attempting to take to heal um, and to move forward from this this is what happened i had my normal 20 week scan scheduled and i went for that appointment at exactly 20 weeks and six days during the scan baby girl is always active um yes it was a girl hopefully you saw my youtube short that showed the gender reveal um but yeah she's usually super active and like her parents in the sense of if they want her to move, she's going to stay still. But if they need her to stay still, she's going to be doing jumping jacks and flipping around. So at this appointment, we noticed something. Um, she was moving. Heartbeat was strong. I think her heartbeat was at like 150. However, she favored one corner of my body more than the others. And... My doctor was like, look, she's probably just nuzzled up with mommy right now. She's just chilling. You know how they tell you to have a full bladder when you go. So my appointment was scheduled for six o'clock. Okay. I came to that appointment with a full bladder. However, these people didn't take me in to see me until 630. I went to the bathroom. I peed because I will pee myself. I have the bladder of a 90 year old and it doesn't work out for me. So I peed. Because I peed, they weren't able to get a good uh, view of my cervix. So they were just taking all the other things while we um, waited for my bladder to fill back up um, so I can, so they can look at my cervix. So when that time came, she immediately called another doctor, the technician. And then I looked at Nick and I was like, the last time we were here, they didn't call no damn doctor. So something must be wrong. And he was like, yeah, she's being a little sus, but let's just see what happens. Maybe something small. And I was like, okay. So the doctor came in and I had to do a transvaginal ultrasound because they needed to be sure about something with my cervix. I said, okay, pretty weird for someone 20 weeks and six days to get a transvaginal. But I said, hey, do what you need to do. Then she had to get a speculum. I hope I'm saying it correctly. Um, the metal one to physically look at my cervix and I 
was sort of, I was dilated. Like my cervix, how she explained it, it was still tight. Like a pinky couldn't all the way get in there, but it could tap right there. But however, inside of my cervix, which is shown on the ultrasound, it's opened like inside out. So usually when you're, you're pregnant, cervix is locked up. And then as you're dilating, it opens up like this so the baby can come out. For me, my joint was like this. <laughs> so she showed me on the scan. I'm laughing so I can get through, but she showed me on the scan and it was wide. But the front of my cervix was still, that opening was still tight. However, they can see that it was starting to get to the point of dilation. So she was like, you're, you're like right there at a centimeter. So we need to send you to the hospital to get a cerclage. What a cerclage is, it's basically a procedure that they, t it's like a ring. I didn't see it. It's like a, they tighten your cervix with it. And getting a cerclage doesn't guarantee that you're going to make it to full term. It's just something, especially at this point, it's an emergency cerclage where they're just trying to get baby a little bit further, whether it be two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, a little bit further. So I went to the hospital. I was admitted. Um, and the doctor who would do it couldn't see me until that morning, right? At this point, I probably was at the hospital. It was like 10 o'clock at night at this point. So they put in my IV. They did all the things. Then the next morning came and the doctor came and he was like, let me just examine you again because I want to see if we can just do progesterone um, supplements instead of putting you through a surgery. And at this point in my mind, I'm not going to lie, it's just like, can you give me both? Can you do progesterone supplements? and do the surgery so my baby could have a, a big big fight and chance because whatever um so he was like let me just take a look and then I just want to say that let me bounce back when we were at the 20 week scan the doctor kept saying you know we want to avoid premature re premature labor or she it was kind of like she was I'm not going to say scaring me because she was a good doctor but it's like she was putting a lot of emphasis on, you know, we don't want the baby to be born too premature. We don't want whatever, whatever. And I said, ma'am, I just want to let you know, my husband is a premature baby. My brother-in-law is a preemie. My brother that my mom gave birth to is a preemie. I said, I'm not afraid of preemies, okay? I just want to make sure this baby comes out safely. And obviously it would need to be in viability time. So if I'm at 20 weeks and six days, we, we got like four more weeks, right? Three or four more weeks, because I think it's 24 weeks viability. So now he said, you know, this is back to the hospital. He said, let's check you out. He looked and immediately he was like, yeah, we gotta get you in the surgery. Um, and I was like, okay, so when do we do this? A little later, when can you squeeze me? And he was like, no, now, we need to go right now. And I said, okay, fine. So we went to surgery, prepped me up. He let me know that I won't be knocked out for this. I'm going to be awake and they're gonna give me... Um, Sort of like an epidural, but it's not. I don't know the word for it. So it's the shot, the numbing shot that goes into your body before the epidural gets placed into your into your spine. So I got that numbing shot. My feet, whole bottom half fell numb immediately. Immediately. They had to lift my feet and stuff and all the things, but it felt numb immediately. And in there, I'm just like dazed. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. It was like, oh my gosh, I was just praying for this, praying for that. I didn't know what to do, what to say, how to feel. I just was crying because I'm like, this can't be happening. I was just hoping for the best, but knew nothing. So he put me up and you're kind of, when you're, usually when you're doing surgery, you think you're straight on the bed like this. So I was tilted a little upside down so they can see inside of my um, cervix and stuff and they just numbed me and prepped me and he didn't even touch me really i just felt them put like i think betadine around my my junk and he was like miss fraser i'm so sorry your water just broke and i said oh he was like yes that's why we want to rush you because we don't we don't want your water to break once your water breaks you're having a miscarriage and this day was Friday. So that was when I hit the 21 week mark that day. <clears throat> so they wheeled me back. They told me and Nick, we told 
um, our family. And I don't think they were fully grasping it because we didn't want to call 50 people. We just did a chat and I, everyone was praying, still having hope. And then at some point we were like, I think they think that they're still, it was like, we got to tell them we're losing the baby, um, which is what we did. So the process after that, they gave me two options. First option was, you know, get induced. Um, they're going to give me epidural, all the things. I go through labor, labor and I push my girl out. Or they can do an emergency um, operation and she'd come out in pieces. No. This is, she young but she old. 21 weeks. I will go through labor and I'll push her out, which is what I did. So now... Um, now Nick and I get moved to a different hospital room. And at this point, you know, some family decided to show up. Not decided, some family were able to show up. They, I think my mom was already there at that point. Then my father-in-law came and my brother-in-law came and they were there with us. And it, it would just helped with them being there. I, I couldn't do this without my village and I'm not gonna pretend that I was able to do this without my village or continue to do it. I, I don't know how to handle certain things and they were just there through my maybe confusing moment, my maybe snipping moments. And then a lot of it, I was just numb for physically, emotionally, I was just numb. So they moved us all to a different room and more families started to, you know, fill in and et cetera, et cetera. They wouldn't allow me to eat. I didn't eat from the Thursday and it was now Friday. So they didn't allow me to eat. I was just going through labor. So what happens is how they get my cervix to open up more to a point where she's able to come out, to dilate, where she's able to come out. They stick a push um, two pills up my vagine. Um, and that happens every three hours. So the first three hours, I didn't feel nothing. They were like, remember you could push the button for the epidural? Yes, sorry, I skipped over that. I had to get an epidural. So now this is me getting that same numbing shot again that Friday, plus now epidural, which I did not like that experience because I hate needles and I couldn't do it. And I'm so happy they allowed my husband to be in the room with me because they thought he would freak out. So they wanted to kick him out. I was like, he's the wrong person you're worried about freaking out. I will freak out and I'm trying not to be paralyzed. So keep this man in here with me. And he stayed and he, he held it down. So I got the epidural and they were like, you know, remember you can press the button whenever you're feeling a little extra pain, blah, blah, blah. So this whole time I'm like, guys, are you gonna monitor her heartbeat? They were like, no, she's most likely gonna be born and stillborn. Or if she's born, it'll be like maybe 10 minutes she'll last or something. So they just had a monitor for contractions on me. First three hours came, no contractions. Second three hours came, he was like, ah, none again. I said, okay, cool, cool, cool. So then the third time, I think it's the third time or right before the third time, they were about to put it in. And I feel like I'm skipping over things, but it happened so quickly. Um, It was... It, it, I started to feel like cramps and stuff and I was tired, but I couldn't sleep because I was so numb. And then my whole family was like, just try to sleep, just try to sleep. And I'm like, I can't sleep. I can't sleep. It's not, I'm not fighting it. I'm not trying to be cute. I just can't sleep. And they said, I, I actually ended up falling asleep after like, again, just sitting there being numb, staring into space, crying for a little bit. I fell asleep. I got in a position where I could and, and that was good. Now... My blood pressure dropped a few times. I never, ever had blood pressure issues in my entire life. My blood pressure dropped a few times, like really low. One when they were doing some blood work. And then they had to give me a lot of fluids. So I had to get a lot of fluids. And I also had to get some antibiotics because I picked up an infection. So I was battling that. And twas a twas a journey. 
So now um, my husband described it as he was like, you were turning gray. I kind of, he was like, I had to like tap you up and say, just talk to me, talk to me, keep up. And then I got up and I was good. So now we move to, so I can't really, y'all not going to get too much more out of me. I can't really do this, but <clears throat> we moved to right before the third set of pills were about to be inserted or either right after or right before I started to get contractions and I was asking my cousin Nidia was with me and I was like is this what it's supposed to feel like and then I was kind of like making that uh, uh, sound that I was making fun of her for doing when she was going through labor um and she was like it sounds like you are but then we asked the doctor or the nurse she was like we don't see anything on the machine so she had to adjust my my thing that monitored everything so i was like all right cool 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 cool, cool. i know what i'm feeling y'all here y'all see what i'm feeling so i'm just gonna rock out so then i just kept maneuvering on the bed kind of like what i'm doing now to get me comfy and then at one point i was just like it feels so much better when i push when this is happening so i'm gonna do what i want and they were like, yo, just do it. Not the nurses, my family it was like, yo, just do it. I had my own resident nurses in there. <laughs> my brother-in-law, my mom, my mother-in-law. And I was like, all right, I'm just going to push a little bit. I'm just going to push. And I was like, okay, it just feels better. Then it stopped and I was able to lay down. And then I laid down and then I just felt like bubble popping type stuff down there and I was like what is that and then out of nowhere it was like a like a literally like a like a shove out and then I just screamed she's out she's out she's out <clears throat> that's when everybody in the room rose up and got out all of the people except for my husband um and then that's when things also started to take a turn as well. This is a very fast version of this story. I'm going to be so honest with you. But the things started to take a turn there as well. So <clears throat> now she's out. A bunch of doctors come in. They put her on my chest. She's moving. She's breathing. She's super tiny. But it's like so weird that at 21 weeks... I saw her features, like I saw she had my nose, she had her daddy's eyebrows, she had my lip and my little chin dip situation, she had my chin, and I was like, oh my gosh, wow, and meanwhile, Nick is just, yeah, Um. so we're both like dwelling in this, and then I started to drift, and then I just saw more and more doctors coming in. And Nick is just focused on me and the baby. And he's looking at what's happening. He's like, yo, there's mad people coming in and out. My blood pressure got, my blood pressure got really low again. And the doctor was like, you know, usually we just wait for the placenta to come out on its own. You're really early. So it might take a little while for it to come out. Try to push it out. So we did pushing for a little bit. That didn't work. Then I started to, my worst fear diarrhea diarrhea um there was they, sh they said it was blood and poop and then lots of blood coming out of my hoo-ha and I was just drifting and she was like this the doctor um she was like this is gonna be very uncomfortable I'm so sorry but I have to put my hand up there to get the the um the placenta out and I was like all right let's do this right I want you to know just before she said that I pushed that button I pushed that button, <laughs> but, um, so yeah, she shoved her hand there. I felt a lot of pressure, not full pain. Cause like I said, I was on epidural and it was crazy. Then she couldn't get it. So then another doctor had to come pop a hand in there too. He couldn't get it. So then she was like, after they were trying for like a while, they were trying for a long time. She looked at me. They had to take the baby. I kissed the baby. And I said, leave her with her dad. And she was like, I have to bring you to, into the OR right now because right now you've lost maybe like a liter of blood and you're drifting. Like, so as I was drifting, as all of these things are happening, I told you guys about the poop, all the blood, then putting a hand in there. I'm throwing up 
they're like nick is literally like come to it you got to keep talking to me just keep talking to me i was going i was going so they brought me to the or nobody was able to come in there with me because it was an emergency surgery um still bleeding out while on the stretcher going there and they had to do an emergency dnc to get the rest of the placenta out they did that there was complications with that as well I don't fully understand it, so I'm not going to try to explain it, but there was a little bit of complications with that as well, but they were able to get it all worked out. <clears throat> I threw up in the OR multiple times as well. I was drifting a lot in the OR. So at this point, I had more fluids, some more antibiotics. I had a whole lot of other things, and they were like, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? And I just kept asking about my baby. I was like, is she still breathing? What's happening? Where's her dad? Is she good? Blah, blah, blah. And then after one point, they were like, yeah, maybe we can get her husband to come in here with her. And I was like, well, is he with the baby? They said, yeah. I said, don't call him. Let him stay with her. Let him have this moment with her. And they respected my wishes. Thank you. <laughs> and I was in there and I was just looking at the clock just continue to go. I had her at like 220, according to the paperwork. I was in that OR and looking at the clock at like 3.30, then it was 3.40, and then it just kept going. And they were like, what do you need? I was like, I just want to sleep. And they were like, you know, we have you hooked up to everything now, and your blood pressure is okay. Like, we can manage it. You can go to sleep. And I just cried. I was like, I'm scared. I don't want to go to sleep. I'm scared. And they were like, you can go to sleep. And I was like, I am terrified. I'm not going to sleep. And I think I actually did doze off for like five minutes. But I was terrified to do that. Because we're, if we're going to call a spade a spade, I almost died. I lost a lot of blood. I was drifting. It was an acute situation. I legit almost died after giving birth to my sweet girl. So that happens. They roll me to recovery which is in a totally separate area in the hospital. My family is somewhere I don't know. My baby is somewhere I don't know. My husband is somewhere I don't know. So I'm freaking out legit. And they're like talking to me. I can't, I can't speak. I can't do anything. I just, I'm like, whatever. And I started shaking again. Another thing I didn't mention in the beginning, when they gave me the epidural, I was shaking uncontrollably, but then I, I watch all of these vlogs and I'm like, shaking is a part of it. And they were like, no, it was a lot. My infection increased it and it was very bad. So hence more antibiotics, whatever, whatever. So I'm in the recovery area with different doctors, different whoever's. And I'm just like, where's my man? Where's my baby? Yeah, they're coming. They're coming. I doze off. At this point, I wake up. I'm like, it's 5.30, where are they? They're definitely coming. They're just doing whatever, whatever. I say, okay, is she still breathing? As far as I know, she is. ra ta, -ta. Then 6.15, I wake up from another doze off. I see on the clock it's 6.15 a.m. I said, excuse me, my nurse, at my nurse. I was like, we'll call her Belle. I said, Belle. She's like, yeah. I was like, is it 6.15 a.m.? She was like, yeah, the next day. I was like, oh, she was like, wow, are you okay? I said, where's my husband? I need my husband here now. I do not do well with this alone, you know? And I was like, does he know what happened to me? Does he know that I'm okay? They're like, yeah, we told him you're okay. You're fine. You're stable, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, yeah, I need to be with him now. And also is my baby breathing? Nobody's giving me no information. So probably like an hour after that, I hear Nick and the sigh of relief that I felt was unmatched because I went through all of that by myself from the OR until going downstairs because he was with me the whole time. So for me being with this man the whole time to then go into a situation where I could have, yeah, I was just by myself and I just felt like a biggest sigh of relief. And then I was like, Nick, and he was like, yeah. And then I heard him crying. I was just like, are you okay? He was like, yes. Then I'm asking them questions. They're still trying to, avoid, I guess for my mental health, they're trying to avoid telling me that things about my baby. And I was like, Nick, you know me, just be straight with me. And she's still breathing. And he was like, no, she's not. And I said, okay, okay. Thank you. Did I ball? 
Absolutely. Am I about to cry now? Absolutely. But I just wanted someone to be straight with me and tell me what it was. And me and my husband speak the same language. We're the same person, sort of, kind of. And he was able to tell me, you know, she she's not breathing. And then I was like, oh, well, did you at least get time with her? She lasted about three hours. And I was like, wow, my girl is strong. First, you come out moving and breathing. And when they said you were going to be a stillborn and then the baby that's supposed to last maybe five to ten minutes lasted three hours. That's a <laughs> that's a strong girl. And I was like, wow, I'm so happy you had that time with her, too. So finally, finally, I get to hold her, see her pretty face, do all the things, and I'm just in tears. Um, And it was just a lot, and they were super worried about me because my blood pressure still kept dropping and yada, yada. So then I was like, I just, like, where's my family? Is everyone okay? Where's my mom? And they were like, how about we bring them down for you? Is that okay? I was like, yeah, yes, please, Let, like, please let's do that and they did which I'm grateful for so yeah I I may have missed things and I'm not I won't be upset if you ask me questions in the comments it's not inappropriate well you know it's inappropriate versus it's not in, inappropriate but I won't be upset if you ask me things in the comment section you can if I I feel like I miss things but I can't keep yeah so um we were able to spend time with her. Um, we named her. Her name is Nevaeh Heaven Fraser. And uh, it was a very traumatic experience for multiple reasons. But I'm glad to be alive. And I'm in the limbo and limbo of grateful to be alive because not a lot of people could come online and say I almost died but then I'm also confused as to why my baby isn't here either so I'm in the in-between space of that and I gotta work that out with God so things that that's happening now Village, again, I'll point that out, has been very supportive. Friends, family, those who've reached out, those who don't know how to reach out to me, who's reached out to my cousin or my auntie or my mom. Thank you for even the kind words from strangers, people I don't know, on the internet. Thank you. I appreciate it. What the issue ended up being is now I am considered someone who has an incompetent cervix. As in my cervix cannot do the job alone of carrying a child. So when, not if, when I get pregnant again, I will do that cerclage earlier where it's not an emergency and my baby or babies have a chance of survival because that cerclage is, is in place. So there's that. My phone storage is acting up, so I hope I can finish this. I'm taking different steps to heal. I reached out to a therapist today. Um, I got a few books. There is this one, Healing the Soul of a Woman by Joyce Meyer. And also by Lysa Tur 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 Turkhurst. I'm so sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Forgiving What You Can't Forget. So I got the book and I also got the study guides for the book i also have my study bible it's been hard for me to pick up a bible it's been hard for me to pray i went to church and couldn't pray for myself so my church prayed for me and prayed for my husband and our family i believe that we're gonna have another child i'm struggling with feeling like five months feels so cruel 21 weeks like right there feels so cruel but I'm still getting through it and I hope that you guys stick around for my healing process as well and get to see the journey of another baby coming here soon. Like I just believe it's gonna happen. Also, 
in doing research because I'm a research junkie I all right I'm trying before my phone plays me again a lot of women who have PCOS I've been seeing that they've been coming up with incompetent services cervix says more than others so it's been said that you should get your cervix checked when you're pregnant regularly if you have PCOS I'm not claiming to be a doctor I'm not claiming to be a specialist I'm just saying what I've looked up and saw online so yeah get that checked out get that done I go back to my doctor next week we'll talk about different things talk about how I'm healing all of the things I'll probably bring you along I don't know it's still very sore this happened I'll be honest a week ago I knew that I needed to share this I needed to share this testimony I need to share this journey because this is what this channel is about it's about life it's not anything specific and this is a part of my life and I want someone to be able to get something from this and also so you realize you're not alone people having miscarriages after the second trimester well after the first trimester I'm sorry is not editing Toya here I'm in my bonnet well shower cap deep conditioning my hair I wanted to finish that off because my memory was playing me miscarriages in the second trimester is not talked about enough it's it's a traumatizing experience and pregnancy itself is very traumatizing anxiety ridden for someone especially people who have gone through the fertility process you are not alone we are not alone it's not foreign to feel funny speak to people do the research and i'm here to share my story so that you don't feel alone so thank you so much for watching this video thank you so much for being a part of this journey and honestly the journey continues and we'll see where we land from here in the end god's will is going to be done thank you so much for clicking on this video have an amazing day night morning whenever you watch